to dissect a few other points. Uh, Martin, patients always when they come, and I'm sure we all kind of witness the same thing, they're always driven by numbers and figures. And, uh, and one of the things that people depend quite a bit on is what's my cancer number, which is a certain tumor uh, uh, marker. Uh, any value for CA199, CA, AFP in that disease? So, so it's a good point because actually we put together what we have discussed for a second ago and go back to the community. Actually trying to diagnose cholangiocarcinoma in the community is still quite difficult. Even though we have the molecular testing and we kind of moving forward for the intrahepatic portion of the disease, the regular pathology only have CK7 to really and I see to decide, okay, well, this may be a cholangiocarcinoma or not, but CK7 is positive in other diseases. So that is when the biological markers like CA99 and CEA may have some value added to it, plus radiology added to it. So it's a puzzle at the end of the day how you make the diagnosis. So again, the CA99, unfortunately, is still not specific enough to establish the diagnosis. It has to be in the appropriate context and an appropriate level to be able to establish that diagnosis. I totally agree. And uh, Andrea, how often would you, you know, we all check on tumor markers. Like, would you do it on every treatment visit for a patient or at time of scans or when patient wish to have it? Like, Yeah, so normally I would check it with, you know, every month or so, every yeah. three to four weeks with yeah. the treatment. Not necessarily that often. Yeah. Uh, but it's some, and I also tell a patient there are a lot of things there. CA99 is not very specific. Yeah. And so we likely observe the trend rather than just jump into the absolute change or, or the change of velocity. And so patients do get a comfort. They don't, you know, freak out with one, you know, really high number. So. Yeah. Well, personally, I, I, I don't know, uh, do you do it more or or less, Andrew? Uh, I do it. Uh, I, you know, I definitely agree, you know, with Martin and Andrea. I think clearly it's not specific enough. Fair. And the other thing that we need to point out is that, you know, for patients with biliary obstruction in a setting of rising bilirubin, and the level can be falsely elevated. So that part, you know, should be taken into consideration as well. But, you know, in the absence of any other more reliable biomarkers, I do think that we should incorporate the use of CA199, both in the diagnosis as well as the follow-up, yeah. Fair enough. So what we heard so far is uh, cholangiac carcinoma, understandably, and biliary cancers altogether are really a big challenge in regard to diagnosis. Historically, we don't have that many kind of, you know, uh, clues in regard to pathology. If anything, uh, as uh, uh, we just heard from Dr. Gutierrez, uh, CK7, of course, will not be enough to delineate the disease. And as such, uh, uh, there's really the expertise of the pathologist at hand. And uh, of course, pathologists who see more of that disease will be probably the right persons to kind of like decide this is an intrahepatic, extrahepatic cholangic carcinoma. Gallbladder cancer, maybe it has some further delineation because of where it's coming from anatomically. But I think all of us already you heard from is that really there's a drive into more of the genetic makeup of those tumors that can really delineate it one way or the other to be a certain diagnosis being intrahepatic, extrahepatic cholangic carcinoma or gallbladder cancer. We promise we're going to talk a little bit more in details about that. And last point that was brought up, the tumor markers are really non-specific, and we heard a few different point of views on that. If anything, however, clearly um, because of the non-specificity, I think probably it's going to be delineated with something further than this. And in general, uh, if anything, uh, doing it super routinely is not really required because we don't know what to do with it. And and if anything, to kind of, you know, connect it with some other findings, like, for example, a CAT scan, i.e. doing it, for example, at the same time as a CAT scan, will probably make a lot of sense.